So summertime means a few things. Number one, I need to lose a little bit of weight, but it's also white wine season. Cause let's face it, when it starts to get hot outside, do you really want to drink a big, heavy, oaky red wine? I know that I don't. White wines are great for the summer. You chill them, you serve them cold. They taste great by themselves. They can be refreshing. White wines are more of a safer bet to bring to a barbecue. They're really food friendly, go with a variety of dishes. If you buy the right white wine, it can be simple, fruity enough for everybody to enjoy but have some nuances and complexities that you the wine geek really crave let's get into it i have 10 different white grape varieties from eight different countries they're not sauvignon blanc or chardonnay so let's get into it First up, let's start with the Pinot family. We have the Girasol. This is the Pinot Blanc from Mendocino County 2021. Has a nice little screw cap. Pinot Blanc is part of the Pinot family. They're all different mutations. You have Pinot Noir, which is dark skin. Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, which we have next is a light skin grape variety. Makes white wines, all hail from Burgundy. Let's get started here. Pinot Blanc a lot of times gets compared to Chardonnay because it's a quite a neutral grape. Can have nice acidity can be made to a bigger, fatter style, or can be made a little bit crisper. This runs in at 15 bucks. Mendocino County, cool climate region in California. I have to say right away, it smells great for a $15 bottle of wine. What I like about Pinot Blanc, it's got this slight subtle white pineapple type flavor, white pear without being too melony, too banana-y. Has even a little nice mineral touch. This is pretty good. Fruity, soft, has enough acidity to go with a lot of things, but not really sharp. I see something like this for a summer barbecue where you bring it, it's just a crowd pleaser. You start drinking it before you have all the dishes. Pinot Blanc probably reaches its greatness in Alsace, in France, but I think in Alto Adige and Friuli Venezia Giulia, Italy, there are some excellent examples to be found all across Germany too, where they call it Weissburgunder. And now Mendocino, California, that's a really good buy at 15 bucks. 88 plus on it. I think it's really good. Next up, we have Pinot Gris, also known as Pinot Grigio. Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio is the same grape. All it means is little gray. Pinot is little, Gris is gray, and Italiano Grigio is also gray. You see a lot of it as white wine. However, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris is a pink skin variety, and it also can be get pretty red. I know one of my friends that's a producer, I said, do you have any red grapes? And he said, yeah, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> this is the Chemistry Oregon Pinot Gris 2022. 19 bucks. Pinot Gris is the second most planted grape variety in Oregon, right behind Pinot Noir. On the local market, a lot of people tell me it's really difficult to get Pinot Gris because they sell out really quickly. Let's give it a go here. There's two different styles of Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio. You have the ones in Alsace, which can be a little bit richer. And then you have Pinot Grigio, which you see a lot of in Italy. Real thin, crispy, simple, can be acidic, although there can be complex examples, especially more expensive ones in Trentino Alto Adige or in Friuli Venezia Giulia, those wines start to get a little bit bigger, a little richer. The problem with Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio, is the alcohol can climb really fast. The acidity can start to sink quite a bit. A lot of those simple Pinot Grigios that you'll get from Italy, those cheap ones, they're going to be adjusted with acidity because you can add, you can add acidity to grape must to make the wine more acidic or they're picked early. Let's give this a go here. Super crispy and limey. To me, lime, guava, tons of mineral flavors. It does remind me of a Pinot Grigio style that you're gonna see in Italy. A little bit of slate, but it is more complex than some of that cheap stuff. Man, I'm telling you, once you start to step up, you see a lot of the supermarket white wines at $10 and under. When you start stepping up the 15, 19, $20 range, you can get a lot of good stuff. This smells great. I was expecting razor sharp acidity coming from Pinot Grigio in Oregon. That's not the case here. It does have some crispiness, but not like a simple Italian Pinot Grigio simpleness. On the nose, it was a little more simple than it is on the palate. On the palate, it has some weight. I think for this, I would definitely have some cream chicken type dishes. I think this can stand up to meat. Maybe when you're out in the barbecue, anything with cream cheese, feta cheese, I think this would be delicious. Really nice alternative, but for me, 88 points. I think it's a delicious wine. Let's move on. I've got an exotic grape thrown in here. We have a grape from Lebanon. This is called Merwa. This is the Chateau Cassara Merwa 2019, $17. This one is topped with 
a cork, so I had to use a Coravin. Marwa actually is thought of to maybe be semi-owned, actually, but in Lebanon, they kind of claim it as indigenous variety, claim it as their own. This is the first varietal bottling of the grape before it was used mostly in blends. The Chateau Moussard Blanc is probably the most famous. I have never tasted this grape on its own. Let's give it a go. 17 bucks for an exotic wine, something that is gonna be a conversation starter, I think is a real good call. This actually does have some semi owned esque qualities to me. When I think of semi owned I think of natural gas type flavors. I think of it as more neutral, maybe a little unripe white pear. That's totally what I get here, but I get a lot of chalkiness. This is more mineral, gassy wine than it is a fruity wine. Has some biting acidity, not tons of fruit, more mineral type flavors. semi owned can be a neutral grape variety. Marois with some geneticists is considered to be semi owned I definitely see the similarities here. This is not the white wine for everybody to bring to a party. This is more of a hardcore geeky wine you bring to people that know a little bit more about wine. Like, oh, a Lebanese wine, a Lebanese white wine. 87 plus points for this. I think it's delicious. I think it does have some complexity. It's just not fruity enough for the general public. That's just my hot take. I'm not gonna steer you wrong. All right, next up, we have Viognier. This is the Yalumba Eden Valley Viognier 2021, 19 bucks. Again, all these wines delivering a lot of value. Viognier, responsible for some of the greatest wines in France, namely in the Northern Rhone. You have a Condrieu. You have a Chateau Grillet, which is his own appellation, own by one estate. I think it's one of only three in France. I think you only have Romane Conti, Coulis du Serrat in the Loire, and Chateau Gride. It's also responsible for one of the greatest red wines in the world called Cote Roti, which is mostly Syrah with a little bit of Viognier. Yes, a little bit of white wine co-fermented in. 19 bucks. I'm a huge fan of Australian wines. Yalumba is a bigger winery, but it's still family owned. So gotta respect that, 19 bucks. This has gotten some big scores. Viognier is pretty floral. It can be a lower acid type grape, so it can be softer, easier to drink. And this does have a little bit of white yellow flower, white peach type flavors. The floralness is, the cool thing about white wines, I think even when they're vinified simply, they are a lot, the world of white wine is just, more diverse than the world of red wine. Complex white pepper, definitely lower in acidity than the previous three wines, so it's kind of soft on the palate. I notice a lot of new wine drinkers, especially new white wine drinkers, the acidity, that sharpness can really bother them. I think this is layered, I think this is excellent. Very good, to me, solid 89 point wine, 19 bucks, excellent. Okay, we're gonna have a couple of exotic grape varieties here. Next up we have the Castel Sicoli. This is the Poship 2021 from Croatia. Now the only thing is you can only kinda get this in Croatia. I just tasted this when I was on a press trip a couple months ago, I was so impressed with it. 22 bucks, Croatia's full of indigenous grape varieties, 94 to be exact. Poshup is one of the highest quality white grape varieties. My favorite white grape variety in Croatia is actually Gurk, but it's so small. There are only 60 hectares, I think, in the entire country. Poshup is from the same island that Gurk is from, the island of Korchula, which legend has it that Marco Polo was born there. That's just a legend, just a legend. I don't know if it's true or not. Let's get going on this. Poshup has grown on the Dalmatian coast for its true Mediterranean climate and it retains acidity and the heat down there, which makes it a wonderful grape variety. It's a bigger bodied wine. Kind of reminds me of if you blend Rousseau and Chardonnay together. It can take oak aging well. This is partially barrel fermented. Let's give it a go here. White apricots. Lots of seawater here, tons of seawater, white peach, a little bit of lime, guava, the most complex out of all these wines so far. So unique because on the nose, this is really fruity. On the palate, it's more mineral. You have a very, very long finish. I would love to have this with some maybe tomato, onion, feta cheese, cucumber salad, sometimes onion can overpower wines. I think this would go great with something like that. Some like, something like a Greek salad, a horniatiki, 90 plus. Really good wine. Poshup is really cool grape. I know it's not the easiest to find. There are some Poshups available in America. The ones that are all brought into the US, I would say check out because they're usually pretty good. Next up, we have a Greek wine. This is the Dorakis Winery Vidiano Linos. That's the name of the wine. 2021, 27 bucks. This is from the island of Crete. Crete is one of the biggest islands in the Mediterranean. Island I haven't been yet. Like I said, I haven't been to Greece actually at all yet. I love Greek wines. 
true Mediterranean climate, so sometimes people think of it as uh, being a red wine country, and actually 70% of the production in Greece is white wines. A lot of unique aromatic grapes, Malaguzia is one of them, Acertico, uh, Moschifilero, really some interesting stuff going on. Let's give this a sniff. I've never had Vidiano before. This is barrel fermented. I actually know the owner of this winery because he lives part of the year in Boston. So this is the first time I'm tasting his wines. Let give his smell here. Now, not so aromatic and floral like I'm used to with Greek grape varieties. More melon, more dried apricot flavors. Smells like a bigger wine when this comes in at 14% alcohol. Smells super complex. Yeah, dried apricot, a, just a touch, a touch of wood, maybe a touch of banana, some rocks. It's not floral. I was expecting it to be floral. Let's give it a go. I know all I know is Vidiano is prized in Crete where it's true Mediterranean. It's warmer, it's hotter, it retains acidity. Let's give this a little taste. Another wine that is soft. It's got the this buttery mouthfeel, so people that like buttery Chardonnays are gonna like this. I don't think this is an overly buttery, buttery wine. Actually, though, it would go well in the barbecue with rolls, you know, spread a little butter on top of them, any kind of cream cheese type dishes, feta cheese. I think this is really gonna shine. So I'm slightly higher in the post up where I think I said 90 plus, still 90, complex wine. Uh, I'm excited to taste more wines from Duracus. You'll notice in this video we don't have any Italian white wine grapes. That's because I have an entire video about unique white wine grapes from Italy that's coming soon, so stay tuned. Okay, we're going with some more grapes you might have heard of before. Next up is Gruner Veltliner from Austria. This is the Netzo Gruner Veltliner from Carnuntum. 2022, 17 bucks screw top. Big fan of screw top wines, especially wines that are designed to be drunk young. Gruner Weltliner, Weltliner, really, really bang for your buck type wine. Has grassy notes, so if you like Sauvignon Blanc, it, it has some of those type of flavors, but it's not going all the way there. Sometimes Sauvignon Blanc can be too powerful for a lot of people. Let's give this a go. Uh, Carnuntum. Not as well known of a region, the Wachau, that's where some of the more namely Gruner Weltliners are from. Actually, one in every three vines planted in Austria is Gruner Weltliner. You like that little fact? Reminds me of Gruner Weltliner to a T. Thai basil, lime, a little bit of grass, mineral notes. That I mean, this is Gruner Weltliner to a T. This has snappy weight to it. It's zingy. Gruner Weltliner, they have zippy wines. They're not too sharp where it can really bother you, but Man, totally different stuff. I'm gonna give it the same score as the Doracus Vidiano, 90 points. However, completely opposite wines. That's why scores aren't always important. You have to listen to how the wine tastes. This is bigger, lower in acid, more buttery. This is crisper. And speaking of summer wines, I would love this with a mango salad. A Thai mango salad, I'd be so happy. I know as we're going stereotypical Asian, but man, I would like this with pad thai, maybe some green curry. I know that's not always a barbecue food, but oh, God, with Vietnamese goi kun, those raw spring rolls from Vietnam. Oh, I would love that. It's a super lovely wine. Super lovely, worth checking out. Next up is a grape from the Loire, Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc is what we would say in English. I love how the French say Chenin Blanc. <laughs> My French is terrible, so maybe you can make fun of me in the comments below. From the Loire, also grown in the Languedoc, where this is from. The only places that's really taken it off, there's some plantings in California, but South Africa has really kind of claimed the grape. This is the Gaida. This is the Figure Libre Chenin Blanc. 2021 Pideo, 25 bucks. I've had some previous vintages of this wine a couple years ago, really reminded me of a riper South African style. Chenin is maybe one of the greatest white wine grapes in the world. Can make sparkling wine, can make sweet wine, can make off dry wine, can make super sweet wine, can make dry wines. They can be more mineral driven, they can be fruity. It's really a quite versatile grape and I don't know why more people just don't love it. Let's give this a smell here. Now this really reminds me of the Pinot Blanc type flavor Chenon, I have confused it with Chardonnay and blind tastings before. Lots and lots of pineapple, tropical fruit, pa uh, passion fruit type deal, even a bit of a little white pepper. Very fruity nose. This is a little more tinglier, has a little more acid. The Pinot Blanc was a little bit weightier on the mouth. This really, really has popping acidity. It tingles. It does remind me of some high quality, fresh South African Chenin Blancs. This is an eco producer. I think they might be biodynamic as well. 25 bucks. I'm 89 points on this wine. I think it's delicious. For people that like Chardonnays, maybe you bring something like this to the party, say, hey, try this. 
Trying to think of barbecue things. So funny, I don't like normal barbecue foods, but I don't want to eat hot dogs, uh, hamburgers, unless they're super high quality, I'm not a big fan of. Oh, I would love this with, if they're doing any fried finger food type deal, I think this wine would do exceptionally well because the acidity kind of cleans off the grease in your mouth. Nice stuff. Next up is Grenache Blanc. Grenache is part of the Grenache family. It actually should be called Garnacha because it's actually a Spanish grape. There are three different mutations. You're gonna have the red Grenache, you're gonna have Grenache Gray, and you're gonna have Grenache Blanc, which we have here. This is a pretty ambitious example. This is the Domaine Galival. This is the La Clavel number no. eight, 2019. So this is a partial selection, a single vineyard selection. 270 meters in altitude in, in the village of Cairan. I'm trying to find out if this is an Appalachian wine. It's not, it's just a Vend de France, but it's 45 bucks. It's gonna be barrel fermented, let's give it a taste here. Grenache Blanc can be a neutral grape variety. Sometimes you need barrel aging, lees contact to make it interesting. I think some of my favorite Grenache Blancs I've tasted are from Coulier in the south of France in the Roussillon. Okay, lots of lees contact. It is kind of neutral. I think white apricot type flavors. A lot of wet rocks, like when you go outside on a hot summer day, I lived in the tropics. If it have rains and it heats up outside, you have that wet rock type of flavor. That's what you're gonna get here. Smells good. This is the most ambitious wine here. Obviously, it's a little bit pricier too. It's not as fruity. More mineral, more of the Lee's yogurt contact. Has the longest finish of any of these wines. It has almost like that kind of slight sweet banana buttery feel you're gonna get in some bigger Chardonnays. Grenache Blanc can sometimes be pretty boring. The oak integration is actually perfect. This is totally a, you know, I would actually, this might go. If people are doing a, a cookout and they're making a little bit of chili, maybe not chili that's too spicy because it has some bigness, some richness, some of the sweetness of the wood might melt into the chili. Ambitious wine, 45 bucks. I know it's not cheap for me. I'm 92 points on it. I think it's an outstanding wine. No duds here so far. We're going on to my favorite grape variety and that's Riesling. When it comes to Riesling, for me, Germany is the Mecca. I think the Austrians make some wonderful ones as well. You're gonna find some nice ones in the USA, Finger Lakes. You're gonna see some of those wines coming up, Washington State, California even, and Australia. Claire and Eden Valley, I think there's some phenomenal Rieslings. This is the Gutler Mansberg Seven Terroirs 2020. 28 bucks in the US. This is a dry Riesling in Germany. You're gonna find it for like 13 bucks. Riesling, what else can you say? To me, the greatest grape variety in the world, the most complex. This is from the Naha, my favorite region in Germany. This was the old cooperative that was privatized. I really like what they're doing. This is a pretty snobby, geeky thing on my part. When I ask wine people, wine people a lot of times claim that they love Riesling. Grape that I love, I've traveled all over Germany visiting all the producers on my own dime because I love it so much. When I ask people, oh yeah, you like Riesling? I always ask them, what's your favorite region? And if they automatically say Mosul without thinking, to me, sometimes I doubt if they really know Riesling or not because that's such a default answer. If they give me a rationale why, then okay, yes, I get it. For me, dry Riesling, Naha is my favorite region. Number one, it's such an amazing region. You have small two lane roads, super steep slopes. The dry Rieslings have enough fruit, but they also have this wonderful acidity, a real tension. So let's give this a smell here. Wonderful wine. <laughs> Lemon, chalk, limestone, white pepper, apple blossom, baked apple, very complex. The acidity, it's almost like having fresh squeezed orange juice. You have that balance between the fruit and the city. The tension is just absolutely lovely. Riesling, I could just drink all day, every day, fresh, young, dry, sweet, aged. It doesn't matter. I think this is a wonderful buy. Riesling is exceptional because you get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to dry Riesling. 92 plus on this, I think it's outstanding. So tell me, what do you like to drink in the summer? Have you had any of these white wine grapes? Do you have any favorite regions? producers let me know in the comments below enjoy the summer